and I am Carol Ronan, currently the committee woman of the 48th Ward Democratic Party and the 9th Congressional State Central Committee. And I'm having deja vu right now because many of you are too young to remember 1992. The climate was the hearings about Clarence Thomas being appointed to the Supreme Court, Anita Hill coming forward and talking about sexual harassment. And like many other women that year, I decided I had to do something about it. And I, I was appalled by what I was seeing. And you saw this panel of senators, all white guys, and even Democrats and Republicans, but they all, none of them got it, and that was our term then. They just don't get it. The issue was around sexual harassment, and as it turned out, people didn't believe Anita Hill. We would wear buttons saying, I believe Anita Hill, but that's not what happened, and she got skewered, and as you know, Clarence Thomas was appointed to the Supreme Court, and there he sits still today, making terrible decisions. So I ran for office that year, 1992, which was a great year to run because it was the year of change and it was the year of the woman. Many, many women ran for the first time that year, as I did. I ran against an incumbent who had been there 13 years, and I thought he had just ignored wasn't really a leader on the issues I cared about. And choice was a critical, critical issue back then, and not too much has changed, it still is. I wanted to be there to make sure I was protecting a, a woman's right to choose, it was something I felt strongly about. As I campaigned in every neighborhood, it's happened all the time, and other candidates had the same, had the same experience. People would walk up to me and they'd say, I only have one question. And I'd say, yes, I'm pro-choice. And that was always their question. It was an incredible time. A 1992, Year of the Woman, Carol Mosley Braun won back then. Many women, are, my legislative class was the largest ever. More women uh, had ever been elected before. And it was, it was a great time and we were feeling good. You know, we thought change was in the air. Then came 1994, which is what we call one of those off-year elections. And women, while women came out and voted in 92, from every office down to judge, to state representative, to U.S. senator for president, women were a significant part of, of all those elections, electing our president, electing our states, our U.S. senator, electing the legislature, electing women judges all over the state. In 1994, they didn't come out as much, and a lot of the women who won in 92 lost in 1994. So it's a lesson that we all have learned, and it's something we always try to address in these off-year elections as we're having now. That's why one of the great things about Virginia, what happened in Virginia, and New Jersey, and Oklahoma, is that turnout was fabulous among Democrats, and women really led the way. There were stories everywhere about women waiting two and three hours in line in the rain in Virginia to vote. So what we saw starting after the November election, the Women's March, that kind of, I want it's really anger that we all really still have about what happened has really translated into political action. We saw it in the ballot box in Virginia. We've seen it here in, in Illinois. We caused the governor to sign a pro-choice bill, HB 40, that many of you helped us. We did phone banks and called legislators and we put him in a position where he had to sign that. Uh, women all over the country stopped the Congress from eliminating Obamacare. We have to be vigilant. They're still after it. But that happened because of all the work that all of you do. And you should feel good about that. The results are, are very significant. The lesson we have to learn is that when we vote, we win. If we organize and mobilize and vote, we win.